Welcome to Nourish Technologies. I am Banga Raju and uh, this is the part 3 uh, video of uh, collections. So, in the part 1 and part 2 of the collections video, I explained about list and hash table. So, today um, we will just talk about this. Actually, collections, we have a drawback with them. What is the drawback? They are not type safe. What is that not type safe? Um, if we go back to our the hash table class what we have just used earlier and the array list what we have used you see to add an element into the array list it is going to accept a parameter what is the parameter the parameter is object value the parameter what it is going to accept is object value and because it is object value we have a chance of storing any type of value into it. We can store any type of value in this. See, here I am storing 200. In this place, I just wanted to store hello. And here, I am just going to store a boolean value. And here, I wanted to store a double value. And here, I wanted to store a character value. So, like this, I was storing different types of values here. So, even if you are trying to store different types of values at this location, it will accept all the appropriate values. All the 5 values what I used are 5 different types, but still it is going to accept all the values. So, what is the problem if it accepts? Let us watch first. Yeah, Even if I stored 5 different types of values, it has accepted you all the 5 values what I just entered here. So, whatever you try to give, it accepts that value. It is going to accept the value. So, what is the problem? The problem is, in an application, I wanted to store n number of integer values. So, what is that is n number of integer values. So, generally, if at all I say, I want to store 10 integer values, what we can do? We can take a integer array and store. So, when we can use an array, uh, arrays are type safe actually. So, we can declare an integer array, they are type safe. But when we can use an array, if you know the size, I wanted to store 10 items, array is ok. I want to store 20 items, array is ok. But I want to store n items, the n is not known, the n is not known right now. So, in the run time, when the values are being taken up, at that time, we are going to identify the n. So, when n is not known, we cannot use a array. So, because the problem with the array is arrays are fixed length. So, they cannot increase the size. If you want to increase the size, what is the drawback? You are required to create a new array and copy the old values into the new one. So, this is the major drawback what we have in case of arrays. So, to overcome this particular problem, we came to collections. Collection, when you talk about a collection, size is not required to be specified by a collection because collection can store variable number of items. It is not like a fixed length, it is a variable length. And the size of the collection is going to grow automatically. Auto resizing facility is available, but not type safe. They are not type safe. Why they are not type safe? See, for storing n number of integer values, if I take a collection, while entering the value by mistake, if any wrong value is entered there, it accepts. Wrong type of value is entered, it accepts. I am going to enter a string value, it accepts. I am going to enter a double value, accepts. Boolean, character, float, whatever we enter, it is going to accept. But our requirement is purely storing integer values. So, this is the problem what we have with collection. So, in array, we have a beautiful feature. What is it? Type safe. Arrays are type safe. And if you come to collection, in collection also we have one beautiful feature. What is that? Auto resizing. These are type safe, but fixed length. These are auto resizing, but not type safe. So, if you just follow this carefully, for the requirement what I was telling, storing n number of integer values, we require something which has a combination behavior of both. What is the combination behavior? Type safe like an array 
and auto resizing like a collection. So, we want something which is going to have a combination behavior of these two. So, to provide this functionality, to provide this functionality in C sharp 2.0, we are a provided with a feature called as generic collections. So, understand this generic collection, what are the generic collection? So, first we will have a confusion, what are the generics? We will talk about generics in detail in the next video, but just let me give you a clear picture about a generic collection. What is a generic collection? A generic collection is also a collection, but it is type safe and auto resizing. So, generic collections are type safe and auto resizing means just like an array they provide you type safety and just like a collection they provide us auto resizing facility also. So, both the two things combined together the generic collections are born and this is what in the part 1 video of the collections I was telling collections are non-generic, collections are non-generic. What are the non-generic? Non-generic in the sense they can store any type of value not type safe they are not type safe, but now what we are talking is a generic collection. What is a generic collection means? These are type safe collections providing you the auto resizing functionality. Simply speaking, whatever features we discussed with a collection like a list, like an array list or a hash table, all the features will be available in generic collections also, but type safe. How the type safety comes into picture? The array list class what we have used in the collections is now called as list, is now called as list. So, whenever you are going to create the instance of the list class, what you are required to do is, you are required to specify a t here. What are the t? The t represents the type of values we wanted to store inside the list. It represents the type of values we wanted to store in the list. How many types? any oh, sorry what type any type you can tell the type of values you want to store in the list list of int li is equals to new list of int and this collection or this list is a capable of storing this list is a capable of storing only integer values. You can store any other type of values and if you try, you get an error. So, now you understand. If at all I take an integer array, what is the drawback? It is fixed length. But now, let us take a list of integer. If you take a list of integer, it is variable length. Along with it, it is type safe. Now, see, if I say list of string, now this list will allow storing only string values and the type here the t represents the type the type need not be a simple type like our interesting and all it can be a complex type means you are going to define a class and every class is a type you can use that also as a parameter suppose we are defining a class like this public class customer and in this we are going to just write public um, int customer id get set public string name get set public decimal or double balance. So, right now employ this customer is a new type what we have been defining. And now, we can declare a list of customer, some name customers is equals to new list of customer. And what is this? This is capable of storing only integer values, integer type values. This is capable of storing only string type of values and this is capable of storing customer type values. So, this is these are what the generic collections are. Whatever collection classes we have in system dot collections namespace for all those classes Microsoft has provided a replacement in system dot collections dot generic namespace. 
if you remember when I used the array list I imported a namespace system dot collection and in has table class when I used then also imported system dot collection and in this namespace all the collection classes are non generic capable of storing any type of value but the new namespace what I am pointing out here is system dot collections dot generic and this namespace contains classes for storing specified type of values. So, I should tell like this specified type of value. What is the specified? You can tell the type of values you wanted to store inside of it. See this array list class what we have used is now called as list. It is now called as list now. So, we will see using this list in our code. Let me add a new class here. We will call this as a generic list. Generic list. Yes, if you watch this, I do not require to import the system.collections.generic namespace because it is already imported here. And in our previous two examples, I explicitly imported system.collections but not required because it is already imported here. And now, I will use a list. List represents a strongly typed you can just notice strongly typed that what I am calling type safe strongly typed, but uh, the collection classes what we saw earlier are loosely typed. These are strongly typed list of objects that can be accessed by index and provides methods to search, sort and manipulate lists. All these things are possible and a T it is then T, T the type of elements in the list, what type of elements have to be stored inside the list. So, I am telling here int li <coughs> is equals to new list of int and the behavior of this list class is exactly same as the array list what we came across in collections. But the difference is array list can store any type of value, list can store specified type of value. Apart from this whatever we can do with an array list can be performed here. Let us start storing the value. It is the same add method it is the same add method what we have and now I can store different type of values li dot add 20 trying to store a, a set of values in this 50. See if I try to store a wrong type of value here I get an error. I get an error. What is the error? If you say uh, cannot convert from double to int what that cannot convert? Yes, add method takes an integer and you are trying to pass a double value and once you pass a double value, it is not allowing us to store the double value and telling you double cannot be converted into integer. If you try to convert a double to integer, the 0.5 has to be cut off and that will not be performed. See right now, the add method here is just telling you int item but in the array list class it was telling object value, object value but here it is telling you int item and suppose here if I change to float, if I change to float and come here the add method will show as float item. If I change to string here and come here it will show you string item. So, whatever type you specify the same thing will be coming for us here also. So, this is invalid. And now, I wanted to print all these values. We can print by using a for loop because indexed access is available for int i is equals to 0, i less than li dot count, count is a property which tells the number of items in the collection console dot write li of i using the index and just trying to print on the same line. So, giving some extra spacing here and just jumping to the new line just to hold the screen and let us run this generic list and we can access these values even by using a for each loop. One more time let me print this by using a for each loop for each int i in li console dot write i 
class and console dot write line another time and all the methods what we use it there like insert method for inserting an item remove method for removing an item are available here too so we can just use them li dot insert so you can insert an item i want to insert an item between 30 and 40 30 and 40 means uh, fourth place fourth place means index 3 comma and the value is 35 and now i want to remove the item which is present in the second place which is present in the second place you can let me copy this i am just using remove remove at present as second place second place means index 1 and will remove the item so the same methods are available for us here we can see first time a new item was inserted second time an existing item was deleted the remove method insert method whatever we have just used in the array list was available in case of our list class also the only difference is that is non generic and this is generic but here you will have a doubt the doubt is when i specify int here how the add method is just showing as int item and if i specify string here how the add method is going to show as string item we'll talk on the generics in the next video how exactly we can define the generic methods and generic classes and other from Thank you for watching the video. For more videos, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, Naresh IT.